Texas as it came into the 1980s entered what we refer to as the contemporary era. This concludes from 1980 up to the present day. And Texas during this time had always been a conservative state, but it becomes a Republican-led state in the 1980s. Ronald Reagan was elected president in 1980 and was voted for by Texans, the, only the second Republican to carry the state of Texas other than Richard Nixon. And under Ronald Reagan, he's going to work to undo most of the work that Lyndon Johnson had done with his Great Society, most of the social relief programs that Lyndon Johnson had created. Ronald Reagan is going to work to undo those. He felt that it was not the government's job to end poverty or to help those out of work find jobs, so he cut these programs. Reagan took an approach what's known as trickle-down economics. His economic idea was that the government should cut taxes for rich people so that the rich people then could keep more of their money, and when they did, they would buy items, and then that money would trickle down to people who were less wealthy. Uh, conservatives in Texas liked these ideas and joined the Republican Party. As a result, the Republican Party, starting in the 1980s, is going to become the single party or dominant party in Texas. How the Democratic Party had dominated for you know, over a century, starting in the 1980s, the Republicans are going to take that role. And many Republicans from Texas are going to play a role in national politics. George H.W. Bush, who had lived in Midland for a while, was named Reagan's vice president, and then he became president in 1988. And Bush is going to continue many of Reagan's programs. Also, Bill Clements will be elected governor in 1979 and then again in 1986, becoming the first Republican governor in Texas in over 100 years. And by the year 2000, every major office in Texas would be held by Republicans. Again, Texans are going to enter into national politi politics. George H.W. Bush was elected the 41st president in 1988. His son, George W. Bush, would be elected the 43rd president, uh, winning elections in both 2000 and 2004. And under George W. Bush, he will cut taxes for higher tax brackets. He will also pass No Child Left Behind, a national education reform bill. Uh, he will start the war on terror uh, after the America was attacked on September 11th, 2001. And he will uh, enter the U.S. in the second Gulf War as a result of the war on terror. Another Texan who will get involved in national politics is H. Ross Perot. Uh, Perot, a Texas billionaire, will run as a third-party candidate for president in both 1992 and 1996. Um, he will run as a because he was opposed to the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, which allowed Mexico, the U.S., and Canada to trade for free. Uh, women and politics are also going to become stronger in Texas during this time. More women are going to be elected to office both in Texas and from Texas to national positions. Several examples of this are Ann Richards, who will be elected governor in 1990, uh, the second woman governor in Texas history. Sheila Jackson Lee will be elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1993 and is still serving as of 2020, so she has been there continuously. And Kay Bailey Hutchinson, who will start out in Texas politics and state politics, will become the first Texas woman elected to the U.S. Senate and will be one of the longest-running senators at, by the time of her retirement. We will also see Texas has a large, growing Latino population, which will uh, grow dramatically in the 1990s. By 2010, Latinos made up almost 40% of the Texas population. This gave the group more political power in the state. As a result, increased numbers of Latino politicians will become elected to office in Texas and from Texas. A couple examples of these are Henry Cisneros, who will head up the Department of Housing and Urban Development, also known as HUD, for President Bill Clinton, and Albert Gonzalez, who in 2004 will become the first Latino U.S. Attorney General. Another one, Ted Cruz, become the first Latino from Texas elected to the U.S. Senate. The conservative shift or conservative element of Texas politics will continue to grow in the 2000s with the rise of what's known as the Tea Party. This was a national movement that started in 2009, and their goal was to cut all taxes and government spending programs. Uh, taking their name from the Boston Tea Party, they were very vocal and aggressive against government spending 
and would become especially strong in Texas politics. Globally, Texas is going to be involved in these new challenges that the U.S. is going to face. Starting in 1989 with the fall of the Berlin Wall, the Cold War will come to an end. Communist countries in Europe began rebelling against the Soviet Union and kicking out the communist governments making up these, running these Eastern European countries. The Soviet Union will have its own revolution in 1991 and the communist government there will collapse. Most of the smaller countries that made up the Soviet Union became independent. And then Boris Yeltsin became the first president of the country of Russia, the first uh, democratically elected president. With Russia becoming more of a democracy, Texas oil companies especially are going to get involved and open up in Russia to go after large oil and gas reserves using a new technique called fracking that will be used both in Russia and also in Texas and in the United States. They will go after uh, oil and gas reserves that were in what was known as shale land, where the drill company would drill down and then drill horizontally through the shale, fill it with water, and use that as a way to pump oil and gas out that had not normally been able to be taken out of the ground. So it's going to create a lot of money and a lot of oil and gas resources both for Russia and Texas, which is going to affect the Texas economy. Uh, also, the U.S. is going to be involved in conflict in Southwest Asia. Uh, in 1990, Iraq will invade the country of Kuwait, and George H.W. Bush will send troops in to drive Iraq out of Kuwait, starting what is known as the first Gulf War. Uh, the war will be over very quickly. It's a very successful and decisive victory for the United States. And since the goal was to drive Iraq out of Kuwait, when the war is over, when Iraq has left, Saddam Hussein was left as the president of Iraq. And so it will leave a, a dictator who, in charge in Iraq who is opposed to the United States. One of the things we will also see is the war on terror will begin, or the role of terrorism uh, that the U.S. will have to deal with. September 11th, 2001, a group called Al-Qaeda hijacked four U.S. passenger planes and flew them into the World Trade Center towers in New York City and the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. Uh, this was not the first attack by Al-Qaeda on the U.S. or on these buildings. They had attempted a truck bomb on the World Trade Center about 10 years before, but uh, this is going to be the largest terrorist attack. Several thousand Americans will die and the U.S. will respond. They will specifically go after al-Qaeda and its leader, Osama bin Laden, who had planned the attack. Bin Laden was hiding in Afghanistan where he was protected by the radical Taliban government there who were in charge. And so the U.S. will invade Afghanistan in 2001 when the Taliban will not turn over Osama bin Laden and the U.S. will force the Taliban out of power. Uh, bin Laden, though, will continue to hide Meanwhile, President Bush will also blame Saddam Hussein of Iraq for supporting terrorism, uh, the same Hussein who had been there that his father had attacked, uh, had dealt with during the first Gulf War. And so George W. Bush will start the second Gulf War when he accuses Hussein of supporting terrorists and trying to build nuclear weapons. And so the U.S. will declare war on Iraq in March of 2003. Like with the first Gulf War, the second Gulf War will go rather quickly for the United States and be a, a decisive victory over the country of Iraq. And on December 13, 2003, Saddam Hussein will be captured by troops from Fort Hood, Texas. With the victory over Afghanistan and Iraq, though, the terrorist groups uh, and al-Qaeda will continue to operate, operate despite the U.S. victory. So the war on terror is going to continue and is going to last up through the present day. Also, though, with that, in 2011, special forces troops from the U.S. will find and uh, kill Osama bin Laden, so he will be removed from the war on terror. Other changes in Texas in the post-1980s period, Texas's economy is going to become one of the leaders for high-tech jobs in the country. The aerospace industry is going to be a major player in Texas. The Johnson Space Center, which is NASA's headquarters in Houston, Texas, had been around since the 60s. They are also the 
Johnson Space Center is also going to support biomedical research, robotics, aircraft design, and telecommunications systems. Uh, and also advances in life support systems will come out of NASA's headquarters in Houston at the Johnson Space Center. Other changes, Texas will be a leader in the computer industry. Texas Instruments had been around since the 1950s in Texas. It was a computer company who will invent the first pocket calculator. They will then go on to invent, you know, use home computers, but will still today stay very productive in the calculator industry. Uh, a major company is Dell Computers, founded by Michael Dell in Austin in 1984. It will become one of the largest computer manufacturers in the world, having lots of contracts with companies and industries such as education, where they will provide desktop computers and laptops for these companies and organizations to use. Major medical innovations will come out of Texas, heart transplants, the medical heart pump, uh, stem cell treatments for heart disease, all of those are going to start at Texas medical centers, at Texas hospitals. The MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston is the leader in the world in cancer research, and they are going to come up with a new technique of immunotherapy, which uses the patient's own immune system to fight the cancer cells, which will be revolutionary and win the doctors who invented it the Nobel Prize for Medicine. Uh, Texas Medical Center out of Houston will become the largest medical complex in the world. Uh, other things in Texas, Texas will be a major research center for business. University businesses will serve as incubators, uh, working to help fund startups, which are a new company formed by an entrepreneur. So they're trying to come up with new industries to keep the Texas economy as a, as a leader in the world. Uh, Texas will also from the state have public support for technology. The Texas Engendering Technology Fund is created in 2005 that the state gives money to companies to develop commercial uses for the technology the company invents. So the state will pay a company to invent technology and then to come up with a commercial way to use it. Also state and local governments will give money to attract new businesses to their areas. And then there's private research. Many Texas businesses will fund their own research into new technologies and products because if the company can make something new, the company then can make money from that new product also. Uh, as a result, by the 2020s, Texas is going to have one of the largest economies in the world, uh, especially in the United States. In 2013, 12 million Texans will work. Uh, trade, transportation, and utilities are the largest areas of employment. Uh, of Texas workers, it's one of the highest educated workforces in the country. That 80% of Texans will have a high school diploma, and 25%, so one quarter of Texans, had a college degree in 2013. Energy has been a major influence on the Texas economy, and it continues. Oil and natural gas are still major parts of the energy sector, but we see a change also. Texas is becoming one of the leaders in wind energy. Um, it's still smaller than oil and gas, but it is a growing part of the energy category. In agriculture, cattle is the second largest or the largest sector of our agriculture and one of the largest still industries in the state. It is a $10.5 billion industry bringing in that much in revenue in 2012. Cotton is the second biggest sector of agriculture with $2.2 billion in re revenue. Uh, but Texas is also the largest producer in the country, not just of cattle and cotton, but also hay, sheep, wool, and the gro uh, use of goats is a product. Texas will play a major role in foreign trade, courtesy of the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, which was signed in 1992. This allowed the U.S., Canada, and Mexico to trade for free, not having to pay tariffs. Because of Texas is sharing a very large border with Mexico, Texas is going to play a major role in that trade. We see the rise of what are known as Macleodoras. These are factories owned by American companies that are built just over the Mexican border. So the companies do not have to pay American taxes, American minimum wage, things like that, but they can produce goods that are then brought into the United States to be sold in American markets. Ciudad, Ciudad Juarez, just over the border from El Paso, is going to become one of the largest border crossings in America, and it's going to play a major, major role in the creation of these Macleodoras and the trade between U.S. and Mexico 
as people travel back and forth each day between El Paso and Ciudad Juarez for work. Um, and Interstate 10 is going to now become a major shipping trade route for trucks hauling goods. And so all of these are going to combine to help the Texas economy grow. Uh, as Texas looks to the future, it is also looking at what industries can help because we have learned through our experience that to focus on one industry, that industry will eventually wear out. Some of these new energy, new economy ideas for the future are our alternative energies. Wind turbines make up 9.2% of the Texas electricity. The Tech Roscoe Wind Farm and Horse Hollow Wind Farm, both west of Abilene, are two of the largest wind farms and have the most wind turbines in the country. Texas is also increasing its use of solar farms, where the use of the sun for energy and electricity. Uh, and then Texas is seeing a growth in the biofuel market. Biofuels are fuels for cars, gasoline, things like that, that are made from recycling biological material, particularly plants and animal waste. Uh, corn is a major source of biofuel, but we also see algae. And this is a way to create a, a fuel that is both biodegradable but also self-sustaining, that you can continue to grow more corn where oil is a finite resource and will eventually run out. Texas also, their economy is being influenced in the economy of the future by entertainment. Uh, video games and computer animation are growing industries in Texas. Austin and Dallas are major hubs for the video game industry. Uh, for online websites, things like that, that tie into these new technologies for the creation of apps. And Texas has always been as a source of movie sets cast in Texas, filmed in Texas. But Austin, Texas has become a major center now for music and movie production, uh, is one of the largest in the country. Uh, and with that, with this rise of entertainment, Texas has also seen these larger festivals that have now become worldwide recognized and bring in a lot of money. The best example of this is the South by Southwest Festival in Austin every March that brings hundreds of or tens of thousands of people to the city of Austin and is seen as a major place for musicians and artists and movie makers and anyone working in that type of media as a way to launch their careers and their products. And so it's a major factor for the Texas economy. With all of that, as Texas moves into the 2020s, the economy is changing. This is a theme of Texas, as we have seen from the beginning to now, as our culture, our population has become more multicultural, it has shifted, and as Texas looks to the future, it's exciting to think about where these changes will continue to take us as we are an evolving state with a continuing, vibrant, growing, and evolving history and culture.